here in the Amazon and tropical regions across the world. The diversity is just stunning. The complex nature and structure of the forest. You have things such as floodplain and terra firma, um, but then within each one of those major groupings of habitat, you have um, very microclimates that end up leading itself to incredible diversity. Without a doubt, tropical rainforests in particular are home to just an unspeakable amount of diversity in, in her reptiles and amphibians. And then just being able to find something that is so rare sometimes, you know that sometimes you see it and then maybe the only time in your life you see it, or the only time in an entire year or two years you see it. So those are some of the things that make them really exciting. I'm Chris Catola, I'm the Head Field Research Coordinator for Fauna Forever and I also directly coordinate our herpetological research team as well. So herps are reptiles and amphibians, that's the simple answer and they are put together in this, uh, this combined research effort of uh, herpetology. The research methodologies are quite similar and overlap in many ways. Um, and also in, for many species of snakes in particular, their, their, their primary source of food is often frogs. So there's a lot of overlap as well and a lot of interactions psychologically. It is right now around 200 species in the areas that we worked in, um, in the properties that are managed by Wilderness International and the properties that I've worked at with Fauna Forever in the lowlands. Even after so many years of working at some of these sites, we're still finding new records, which is another one of the things that makes it so exciting doing this work. Very similar to Fauna Forever overall, there are sort of two paths that our research takes. Um, the primary path, the primary job that I would have every day in my coordinating of our team is monitoring, you know, looking at um, trends in populations um, throughout the year, between years, within a site, between sites, and then also um, undertaking specific research projects looking at um, how different species of uh, herpetofauna react to different types of farms, for example. Most of our work does occur at night. The reason we don't do a lot in the day is because the majority of the species we encounter regularly are active at night. The species that are diurnal are often extremely hard to actually identify with any regularity to the extent that we would get data that's useful. A normal night for us usually starts after dinner around 7 p.m. and then continues for three to four hours um, and it involves a lot of walking very slowly <laughs> and looking at things very very closely. Staying on the trail, we use an unbounded transect method. We could look at something, yeah, on the ground, a meter off the ground, even sometimes 10 meters in the foliage. It can take, you know, three hours to walk one kilometer and find, you know, find nearly 40 frogs. So, um, yeah, very, very meticulous work for us on a, a typical um, monitoring survey night. Once we capture an animal, um, then what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand a bit about its morphology. So um, we want to uh, collect data on its weight, um, its length. We're using pit tags in terms of our standard uh, herpetofauna research. We're using it for snakes that are uh, approximately one meter and above. The tagging is you know, similar to the tagging we do for caimans as well. Um, it does us two major things. Um, one is it can give us information about that individual itself, how much it's grown, how long it's lived. It gives us a window into how big of its, its territory is. It doesn't tell us for sure how big it is because of course it's not uh, telemetry, it's not tracking the movement. It also can give us a, a window again into the size of the population. So for example, Amazon tree boas, we've tagged so many individuals at our site, an incredible amount. Herps are obviously a group that, especially in, in relation to you know, venomous snakes, um, can be dangerous. I mean, it doesn't mean you would die immediately if they bite you, but your life will never be the same if you get bitten by one. And although they're relatively rare to encounter, um, you have to be alert for that at all times. Anytime you walk in the forest, and if you're then going to interact with them, you have to be very careful. Also, you have to be generally cautious for yourself about handling frogs because they do produce um, toxins and you know if you rub your eye or other things you can get pretty badly irritated by that. But you also have to be surprisingly careful for them because of course we don't want to hurt them. We want to make sure that we're learning about them and we're, but we're taking care of them at the same time. Some of the frogs we catch are 0 0.01 grams and, and it's an incredibly small organism. And uh, we want to handle snakes ethically. We don't want to you know, dangle them by the tail. We don't want to put them too much stress. 
one of the things we really have to watch out for in particular with amphibians is um, any chemicals on our, on our body on our hands because yeah most people would want to drown themselves in insect repellent in this job and there's nights where we are you know um, processing a frog or a snake and there's just clouds of bugs around us and our skin's burning but we can't use repellent if we're going to handle them um, they absorb these chemicals almost instantly and it's the equivalent of us just breathing in you know, bleach or a toxin and even trace amounts can cause serious burns and in many cases like death rapidly. It's always a mix of the safety of, of us as workers and volunteers but also their welfare, the animal welfare as well. We have to always balance those two things out carefully every night. A lot of people ask me that you know what what do I need to do to prepare to come and work on, on the HERP team. For me one of the most important things is, is the mindset that you bring. I don't really appreciate people who, as I call them, are cowboy herpers. People who are here to just show off. People here to just grab a snake and say, look what I caught, you know. Um, and not appreciate the value scientifically and that animal's life, to just show it off as a, as a trophy. But people who come with a true passion for herpetology and a true passion for every frog, every snake, that mindset is something that we want to embrace and foster and grow. In terms of what people gain from being with us, they gain a lot of understanding about the methods used for long-term monitoring um, and you know, learn a lot about how we design it, why we do what we do. And the dialogue that occurs while we're doing our work um, is, is something they can really take from being with us, especially if they have a very inquisitive mind and ask these questions and engage with me and, I, and my fellow co-workers and even the fellow volunteers. They can learn, you know, how do I safely hold a frog and catch a frog? How do I safely hold a snake? You know, how do I put a pit tag in a snake? How do I take these measurements? How do I probe a snake to make sure that I know what sex it is? Yeah, for anyone who's you know, really looking for uh, um, an authentic experience of uh, working in herpetology and learning you know, a lot of like the baseline methods of how do I do this, you know? uh, how I do it in a tropical environment, and also trying to understand about themselves, like personally, is this something I want to do? Am I cut out for this? What do you should be said about herbs or in general. Yeah, I didn't ask you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I guess the main thing relating to snakes in general is just really trying to break down the barrier and, and the, the negative, you know, connotation that comes with snakes. We live in an area here or and work in an area here in Peru um, where, you know, snakes are feared and often, you know, demonized. The thing is, it's not just Peru, you know, it's in most countries in the world. The average person has somewhere between fear to almost hatred of snakes. You know, I really hope that anyone seeing this, even if, you know, they're not um, going to want to come and hold a snake, hopefully they can really appreciate that these animals are just trying to live their life and they have every single right to exist like we do. And this is not our planet, it's their planet as much as ours and we need to share it with them. And I hope that, you know, through the work we do, through the work that so many great organizations in the world are doing, that uh, more and more people can appreciate that they just deserve the right to live just like we do.